What's up, Brian Tong here with all your Googlelicious. It's everything Google that we can pack inside of a show. So, do you want the good news or the bad news first? You know what, I'm gonna start off with the bad news and then, you know, everything else after it will be better. First up, an NPR report says mobile security experts at the firm's Imperium have discovered the worst Android vulnerability in the mobile OS history and it can affect your phone by just receiving an MMS message. Now you don't even have to open it because once the message is received, it activates code that gives the attacker complete control of your device, including everything from stealing your data to controlling your camera and microphone. Now don't start running in circles. According to Zimperium, the exploit isn't being used in the wild just yet. Google has full details to patch the exploit and has acknowledged its severity. But the bigger issue, Google can't force users to update their OS and relies on carriers and manufacturers to issue the fix. Good luck with that. So most likely, many people will still be susceptible to an attack like this if it ever goes mainstream. Good times, Google. All right, in better times for all of us, Google is finally dropping its Google Plus requirement across their products, starting with YouTube. They said it was based on user feedback that it didn't make sense for a Google Plus profile to be your identity in all other Google products. Er, duh. Now the only drawback for me is calling out trolls and you know, people that just aren't happy with their lives and being able to identify exactly who they are. Yeah, I see you. Now the change will be rolling out in the coming months and we're finally starting to see Google separate itself from their soon to be dead, if not already dying a slow death, social network. All right, after months of a slow burning hype machine, the new OnePlus 2 phone has finally arrived. It still brings similar dimensions with its 5.5 inch 1080p display. It brings an all new aluminum frame with a textured backing that can be swapped out and features a Snapdragon 810 processor and up to four gigs of RAM, depending on the model. Now there's a 13 megapixel rear facing, five megapixel selfie cam, and they're all running on their own custom Oxygen OS starting at 329 and available sometime in August. Now the reservation list for the OnePlus 2 is now open and they're expected to launch with anywhere from 30 to 50,000 phones compared to just 10,000 for their first launch. Hopefully this won't be as exclusive as last time since really it's one of my most anticipated phones for 2015. Also, Motorola announced their latest flagship phone as well called the Moto X Style, but in the US it will be known as the Moto X Pure Edition that will have universal LTE banding allowing it to work on any carrier. Standout features are its 5.7 quad HD display, a quick charge feature that gives you 34% juice in only 15 minutes, and its super customization through the Moto Maker site. There's a 21 megapixel rear camera and five megapixel front facing cam that will cost $399 unlocked and will be released in September. They also announced their Moto Play with better battery life but a smaller screen and a revamped Moto G, their best selling smartphone of all time. And more leaking in the Android world, this time it's phone arena with pictures of what's believed to be the Samsung Galaxy S6 Mini. Yes, Samsung's throw spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks strategy still holds true after the recent release of the S6 Active with its more rugged design. Now there's no reliable word on the Mini's official specs, pricing or carrier support, but it exists and we'll probably find out very soon. And here's something we do know that Samsung is doing, and you know what? It's pretty badass. The Korean giant has announced their latest monitor, the SE370, and it will be the first ever to come equipped with an integrated wireless charging pad. Now, it's a standard 1080p display that comes in 23.6 or 27-inch versions, but this is a killer idea. The LED base will turn green while it's charging a compatible phone, and you can bet a few other companies, you know, might be copying this in the future. And finally, in other news, Razer's acquisition of Ouya is finally official. It was the Android game console that I invested in on Kickstarter and flopped. Now, Razer has their own living room console called Forge TV, and their goal is to migrate Ouya users to their platform. Ouya says it will no longer be involved in hardware, but plans to publish future Android TV content. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can always email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time for some more of that Googleicious. Googleicious.